Hello everyone, welcome to this quick video. This one is about creating a remote classroom. So if you are a teacher and you want to stay in contact with your students, wherever they may be, so they may be an absentee, or you may have a school closure. And I'm gonna show you how you can use your eSchools platform to stay in contact with your students, set them tasks, set them homework remotely. So I'm gonna go through some of the tools that you have across the top. And for more in-depth information on all of the tools I'm gonna cover in this short video, please go to the academy, academy.eschools.co.uk, and you can see more information about all of the different functions that I'm going to go through quickly today. So I'm logged in as a teacher and I've gone to classes here. And this particular teacher is attached to all of these classes, but if you're a teacher and you're only attached to the one class, that class will appear automatically for you. I'm going to click on the name of this class here and it opens up the class notice board. So it starts as a blank canvas where you can put pictures, videos, text boxes, downloadable items that your students can see and the parents can see as well. So if you need to share important messages, news, updates, that sort of thing, this is a really good place to do it. To add content to your notice board, go across to the setup tab and you'll see that you can add a class welcome message and a class notification in there. And as you scroll down, you've got a blank canvas where you can add any of the elements across this top bar here, the drawing tool, text tool, images, video, resources, those are the things that you want your students to download. And there's an embed tool as well. So clicking on any one of those will open up the element and you can add items to it. You can click on attach images, it goes to your computer's browser and you can select some images directly from there. If you go to video, you can upload items from YouTube or Vimeo or upload videos that you may have taken yourself by clicking on the little folder icon in the corner and that goes to your browser as well. If I go to text, I can type in some text in here, click on finish and it adds that element to the bottom of the page and you can see that I can click it and move it around the canvas and everything else moves out of the way to accommodate it. So it is fairly quick and easy to create your class notice board. You'll see that I can even take the bottom right hand corner and reduce the size of my elements or increase the size of my elements if I need to. You don't need to save, there's an automatic save on there and as soon as your students log in, this will be the first thing that they see. You can also have class discussions, so I can have a conversation with my class about something that's going on. I can start the new conversation in here. That will be seen by all members of the class and they will all be able to contribute to this conversation. There is a link to projects which I will show you and there is a list of your class just in here so you can see the teachers and the students attached. Now there are also some additional icons attached to each of the students within my class so that you can see a little bit more detail. So you can lock their account if necessary. You can change a student's password if they forget it. You can have a look at their files, have a look at their detailed attendance and even log in as that student. I'm now gonna show you groups because groups is very similar to classes. You can see that this particular teacher is now attached to all of these groups as well. You can create a new group in here by giving it a name selecting the students who are going to be part of it and adding a main user. It's worth saying now that you don't even need to attach students to groups if you want to create a group for teachers, then by all means you can do just by adding your teachers to the members tab. Once your group has been created, you can click on the name of it and you'll see that you have some very similar tools as you saw in classes. You can set up the notice board, you can have discussions, set projects and have a look at the members within that group. Going across to projects, projects is a great way of adding all of the resources for one particular topic in one place. You don't have to recreate these topics, you can just reuse them again and again. So it is very easy and very time saving to use projects, especially if you are going to reuse those projects with lots of different intakes. To create a brand new project, click on the green button and add a brand new one, or you can have a look at some of the projects that have been shared by teachers using eSchools across the country. If you're creating a brand new one, add the name, select the class or group that it's going to go to, add a start date, an end date, the date that it's visible for your students, and you can activate or deactivate projects as you go along. 
so you don't have to recreate them. They're invisible for the students. You can just reactivate them for a new intake. You can then opt to share your project either within the school or with every school. If you are going to share, please add a few keywords in the tags area so that other schools can find your project. You can give your project an icon by typing in a keyword, clicking on the magnifying glass and selecting an icon from the list. You can also change the colour of your icon as well. And once you're done, click on finish to create your project and start adding items to it. I've got a few projects in here already. So if I click on this one, I can add items by clicking on the green button up at the top. And you can see the items there are a discussion, very similar to the class discussion, an album of images, a video, something from YouTube, Vimeo, or something I've uploaded myself. It could be a resource, something that you want your students to download, such as a PDF, worksheet, that sort of thing. We have two different types of quizzes on the eSchools platform. Both of them are multiple choice. One of them times the student, and the other one gives them a score at the end. So you're effectively telling the system which one is the correct answer and the system will work out how many they got right. There is a page as well, which is the blank canvas that you saw for the class notice board, which you can add pictures, videos, text boxes to. And there's also homework as well. Rather than show you homework here, I am gonna go across to the homework section up at the top. We have it in two separate places because you might want to create a homework that's not attached to a project necessarily. If I click on new assignment here, I can select a class or a group and all of this particular teacher's classes and groups will be listed in this drop down here. I can select a project that I want to attach it to, give it a title, a start date, a deadline date, and a deadline time. There are three ways to submit so they can do their homework on the eSchools platform itself. It brings up a text box similar to the one you can see down the bottom here. They can upload a file so they can do it on Word and upload that particular file or they can physically do it on paper and hand it in to the teacher. You can select all three of those if you want to give them an option, and you can tick the box to give them some comments on the homework that they've handed in. Put your assignment details in the box down at the bottom, and then add some resources if necessary by clicking on the green button on the right hand side. You can select the students it's going to go to, so you can select all of your students, or you can select a smaller group. Click Save Assignment, and that will go through to the student. And for the teacher, it looks very similar to the homeworks that we have in here. So for each of your homeworks, click on the title and you can see who submitted and who hasn't yet started. If it's a manual homework, you can change the status here by clicking the little tick box next to their name, going to the action button and changing the status manually. Once a homework has been submitted, you'll see that they're name becomes a live link and you can click on their name to see the homework have a look at it we've got a download here in this instance so we can have a look at that mark it give her some feedback put a grade into the box as well now i also want to show you blogs so if your students want to do some self-directed study they can use blogs so i'm logged in as the student now and if i go across to the me section the student has blogs on the left hand side here with blogs, they can create their own blog by clicking on the green button, selecting a title, and then selecting who can view their blog, whether that be the class or just the teacher. Once they've created their blog, they can add as many blog posts as they need to by clicking on the green button once again. And you'll see that they've got a blank canvas, very similar to the class or the group notice board. But they can add any of these elements to it, move them around and share those particular blog posts with their class or with the teacher. So if they are creating a diary or a record of study, the blogs tool is a really easy way for them to engage. Those are some of the tools that you can use when creating a remote classroom. There's lots more detail on the Academy website, which is academy.eschools.co.uk. You can log in there, go to the teacher section and have a look at some of these tools in a little bit more detail. So I hope that's been useful to you and I'll speak to you again soon.